I understand with somebody that Wait, doesn't somebody understand. Wait, somebody's saying Mandy and shit? Mand? Mand? Yeah, yeah. I keep seeing I keep seeing it over and over again. Talk to yeah. this uh, Apex Pro player. If anyone wants to get Apex hey, Pro player in on the call, I'm I'm fine with that. Hey, what's up, dude? Join the call. I know. Oh, uh, there he is. I've seen Pirate Software a few times. I've seen the yeah. stream. Oh, hello. If you don't know my background for stuff, I've been in uh, offensive security in the gaming industry for about 20 years. So before this, I was the lead of application security for Blizzard Entertainment, which is all of okay. Blizzard's websites globally. I was a senior red team specialist for them, and I have three black badges from DEF CON, and my last job was hacking power plants for the federal government. Uh, in, my Jesus, time throughout, yeah, in my time throughout the industry, I've banned over 2 million players for cheating in games. So like this is 100% my wheelhouse. And we've been talking about okay. the potentials for what could be going on here, and I'm still not seeing any evidence Hold on. of remote code ex execution just yet so you said you talked to the hacker how did they verify who they were basically he i think he's a viewer of mine or a viewer of the apex community first of all he gifted me four thousand packs in game okay. and he gifted uh multiple thousands of packs to other people uh without like wow. taking any money uh that's like a four thousand dollars approximately and also he has this uh bot or like multi-boxing bot that makes like 40 people land on top of you and kill you like I saw that. Out. I watched that video. And he was, yeah, my bad. What are you about to say? No, I said I watched that video where they were summoning all the bots. We were actually just reviewing this. Yeah. The the original videos that went off that showed those those two players using cheat tools does not prove RCE. A lot of people are claiming it's remote code execution. What it does prove is that their machines are compromised. Whether it's compromised yeah. through remote code execution or it's compromised because they download something, something stupid is unknown. So we, we can't jump to conclusions. Uh, this one, though, where he summons in all the bots and sending you all the packs like that, makes me believe that he has some kind of access to the server in a way where he's able to get all of these items and gift them to you, being able to manipulate the server to summon all the bots. That's a much more scary vuln than what he was doing to those two players during that game. No way, guys. Uh, that was, uh, Yo, that was, uh, uh, that was no like, the, that one you have right you now you're you watching is uh, the old one. This is the old yeah, one. Yeah, oh, I just got the new yeah. Oh, it's but, this yeah. one So this came a out a month ago. ago. So this guy's been doing this for a while then. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yes. Um, he's been landing on people. He's been just like normal cheating, you know, like the the classic aimbot wall hack type thing. But he's also been like, he definitely knows some server side stuff and I've been speaking to him. It'd have to be. He's been doing this for long enough. The, the things that I'm worried about, these are the potentials out of this, right? I'm still not seeing evidence of remote code execution, but I am seeing evidence of a compromised server. I'm seeing evidence of maybe a compromised employee or like a, an employee's machine could be compromised. It gives him extra access to this. That'd be something I'm worried about. Or a client that's able to send information to the server that the server then accepts that it shouldn't be, which all three of those possibilities are highly likely based on what he's able to do here. With remote code yeah. execution, that means that you're getting execution of arbitrary code on the end target. So if he has RCE to the server, that would make sense. That doesn't mean he has RCE to each individual player's client. That's a very different thing, if that makes sense. What yeah. What is the point? Has he like tried to like sell a cheat is it is there any like reasons that you're seeing beyond or that he's talked it, about beyond just the point of him being able to do it and give you guys a bunch of packs or no but it, it seems like he's just uh, the thing is it seems like it's for attention because he could literally ruin the guy that jen, jen burton uh he's called the first guy he did it on he could literally ruin someone's career because if yeah he didn't write his name in chat so everybody knew who it was he mm -hmm. would have ruined his career right there right but he's obviously oh, yeah. just doing it for attention also um, he's been doing it to the bigger streamers. Uh, he's been doing it to me, Hal, Jen Burton. I'm not sure if someone else got gifted subs. Uh, like gifted, not subs, my bad. Gifted packs. But he, he told me, I just sent you the new link, by the way, also. He told me uh, when I spoke to him that, uh, that he's just doing it for fun. Because why not? Yeah, that's a huge common driver. Inside of that community, there's not always a monetary driver. Some of the times it's just because, hey, I want to do something that no one else can do. I want to beat the puzzle. And the puzzle may just be, I want to see if I can turn this company's game inside out. Yeah, he told also, me he can access all accounts he wants to, though. He told me he can go on my account, he can open packs. Sure. He told me he can buy stuff from yeah, my account. Sure. You know? so, so here's the thing, though. All of those things that you're talking about, where you could go into my account and buy packs and do that, that's all server side. None of that is yeah. being done on yeah. your client. If you're going into someone's account and doing something like that, it, and again, he didn't do it. He claimed it. He claimed he could, which doesn't mean it's real. You, you have to prove that kind of stuff, right? Trust, but ver no. verify. Trust that he's telling no, the truth, but verify the claim. So in this case, let's say he could do that. All those actions are server-side actions. So if he had access to the server, he absolutely could. But he doesn't have access to your machine. So if he can change, you know, if he can issue payments, if he can do things like changing your inventory, if he could delete your account, if he can do all that kind of stuff, 
that is server side access. If you can place a script or a program on your computer and then execute that, that is client access. And that's way more dangerous, like way worse, if that makes sense. How, how do you, if, if you watch the clip, of course, of Jen, you've probably seen it, I guess. Uh, if yeah. you see the clip, he, there's a literal client on, yeah. like in the game opening. So it feels know, much different than the HAL one too, because the HAL one had no client. It was it only was auto aim yeah. and it was locked on. Whereas this one actually was a transparent window. It looked like it was actually built with in-game stuff or yes. something like it, because it, it kind of melded into the game. I personally think it just does it for attention though. Sure. Yeah. Like to be real with you, if you wanted to do it for attention, you'd hit everybody in every game. Not just two major streamers. You'd hit everybody. Everybody like, oh shit, the hack is real. You know, like that'd be I mean, if you were going for the attention, that would be the greatest way to do attention. Yeah, I'm like, if you're going for full attention, there's even other ways too. Like there's things that he could do if, if it is full RC onto the client, there's other things you could download onto there to maybe just make it so that it says things in chat, right? He's already doing that there. Apex Hacking Global Series by Destroy 2009 and Random, right? This, this statement right here that's there, he could just have every client in the entire game spamming that if he has that kind of access, but he did it to two streamers. That's why it doesn't make any sense. Because if you're going to have a vulnerability like that, it's not about threading the needle to heat, hit in each individual account. You can make it distributable at that point. You can hit a large number of players all at once. If he has the access he claims he does, it doesn't make sense to do it this way, which is, it just leads me back to the individually compromised computers, which again, he may have that access and he just hasn't scoped it up, right? That is possible. But to me, it feels unlikely at the current stage, right? People are like scared to like play the game or open the game oh, or whatever, right? No, so people are going to be super afraid of this. And I, I think a lot of the reason why is because they don't understand what remote code execution is. They, they don't understand this. So let me let me draw this on, on the good old whiteboard here. Let's yeah. say that the attacker's computer is here. And let's say that your computer is here, right? This is the server. If the attacker has remote code execution on the server, it means that they can execute code on this machine from their machine. It does not mean that they can execute code on your machine, but it means that they can modify memory and execute commands on the server. That means that they could do things like ban you or generate packs or change your lobby or delete your lobby or anything else that goes on with this, depending on the server yeah. infrastructure that's there. Now, remember, the server instance is a solo thing. There's authentication servers that handle login, may not have access to that. It could be the actual game servers themselves. So just changing game state, but not changing anything outside of that. There may be servers that handle everything with shops and payment processing details because there's a bunch of different standards that have to be applied to payment processing information totally different servers right so there's lots of different things that go into the server when people talk about servers for games it's not just one thing but it's very clear that he has access to purchase and information regarding how many packs your account has and he has access to the game servers because he can do things like summon in a bunch of bots right those alone does not necessarily mean he has remote code execution on all things because he could be doing a lot more damage. He has execution for two things, summoning bots, banning, actually three things, summoning bots, banning people by flagging their account for easy anti-cheat. And the last one is creating like packs and then giving them people. So those three vulnerabilities are quite bad, but doesn't show full control. Just because you have execution on this machine doesn't mean you have execution on the end user's machine. You would have to have another vulnerability. What you would need to do at that point is you have to have remote code execution on the server, and then that would then chain into another vulnerability that's on the client. The client would have to be vulnerable, so you could do that on the end user, which would be your game copy. In yeah. this case, we can't prove this connection. So it's strange to say that that's the truth, right? I have a question to you guys, though. I think a lot of people want me to ask this question, too. We've been struggling with cheaters and this shit for fucking years. Yeah. Like... Oh, yeah. Two years plus of just like, and it feels like nothing's happening. So in game security yeah. stuff, generally the way that we do this is through band waves, right? And I, I'm sure you've seen a bunch of band waves for the game, right? Are they doing massive band waves of like no. th tens of thousands? They haven't done, done anything? They the one time. How many people do they ban in the one band wave? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, it was it was a lot. People like jumped a bunch of places and stuff like that, but they only one time. It was like only one, one time, time? In, for like a whole week where the game okay. actually felt normal. Generally, the way that we do this is you're supposed to do it every three to six months. And it's not about catching the players cheating. And I know that may be weird, right? Why would you ban players if you're not trying to stop the players from cheating? You're not. It, they're actually ammunition. What we usually do, we do it every three to six months because you, there's a person on the other side that's making the botting or cheating tools. They're creating those tools and they're usually monetizing that in some way, right? If they're not monetizing yeah. it, whatever. But when you do this three to six month ban, if they are monetizing it, you get a shitload of chargebacks. 
if they're not using crypto. All those players are suddenly angry customers for your opponent. At the same time, you also get a bunch of angry players that are reviewing that bot and telling everyone, don't use this tool. I got banned for this tool. So you do this all at once to overwhelm the shit out of your opponent. All at once. That's why we do every three to six months. And it also stops your opponent, who are the bot creators, from detecting how you caught them. Because they don't know. Yeah. It could be any change they made over the last three to six months. You do it then, at that moment, to basically just wipe them off the map. Each time one of those bandwaves went through, it chipped away at every one of those cheat creators until many of them fell under the pressure because they couldn't handle it. And that helps make the game better. It's not about the okay. players getting banned. It's about using them as ammo every time. If they're not doing regular band waves, if they're not doing that every three to six months, there are two reasons why. Either they don't have the manpower for it or they don't have the detection method for it. So like on the dev side, I'm wondering if they just can't solve this issue right now and they might be able to solve it later, or maybe they just can't solve it because they're overwhelmed by it, man. Like, what the fuck do you do? Do you just tank it the rest of our lives, or what? Yeah, on the player oh, well, side, yeah. on the player side, the yeah, most huh. that you can do is raise awareness for this, is talk about it on social media. See, these are the things that I am seeing as a player, without making wild claims, because people are going to make wild claims about this. Remember something, and this is this is the most important thing. And I know it; it doesn't feel like this all the time. You're on the same side as the devs. And it feels like the devs are lazy. It feels like the devs don't care. But I guarantee you, there's a bunch of developers trying to solve this, and they can't right now. They don't have okay. a method to do it, or they don't have the people to do it. And I know that sucks, and it doesn't feel that way. But it's it's so easy to fall into the trap where you are adversaries with the devs when they're already fighting these guys. Work with them as much as you okay. can. Report as many of these pieces of shit as possible. Put that out on social media. Show that any time you possibly can. The problem I have is the communication is so bad that it yep. feels like they don't care. Does that make sense? Like If they tweet it out every now and then, like, yo, guys, we know there's a problem. We're really fixing. Like, we're trying our best. Keep reporting. You know, you guys got that shit. Stuff like that, it'll be fine. I agree. But it's dead silent for like three months. And yes. then you get a, oh, look at this new recolor, $25. And this new super epic heirloom, 700 bucks. Yep. Wow, yeah, like, dude. I can't wait for next so, season. Like, it feels like fucking dog shit, right? I like, know. I know. Community so, manager would be good at I, this I, point. <laughs> yeah. Community manager talking to the player base would be a great idea. And I, I do think they're absolutely failing that. One thing you have to remember. While a company looks like a unified thing on the outside, right? We have a full company and it's the company that makes Apex, right? The big company. There's marketing teams. There's people that are handling uh, processing for payments. There's people that are handling the storefront. There's people that are handling all of these different each systems, right? The game may be on fire, but that doesn't mean the other teams stop moving. They had a product line that was planned to come out at these times. They're not releasing it even though the game's on fire. They're releasing it because it's their timeline to release it, whether the game yeah, is on yeah. fire or not. So it may look really shit on the outside, but that team's not going to stop functioning just because the game's on fire. They're just going to keep doing what they're supposed That's their job, right? I think the biggest thing here is to understand that the security team and the game management teams are probably having a huge problem. Like that's They're the ones that are absolutely on fire. These other teams are just going to keep doing exactly what they're doing. With those, I, I absolutely agree they need more community community reporting stuff they need they need more communication with you guys because that's the worst thing you can do is be like oh the game's on fire let me shut up and sit in the corner like no because in today's age on the internet and in general if there's a bunch of wild ass claims happening like this if you sit silently in the back the room is going to fill up with people who are making wild claims and no one yeah. is going to have any other voice to listen to so they're just going to believe the wild claims as a company you guys got to come out and say, this is what we're doing. We know this is a problem. We agree with you. Let's fight them together. Change that shit. Change the narrative back around to be a collaborative one with the players who hate this, because you hate it too as the, as the team that's working on the game. And you know you hate it. You have people working on this shit. Work with the players. Tell them you're working with them. Be public about it. You could turn this around into a win instantly by doing that. Even yep. if it takes a long time to fix, even if it's really shit to fix, even if you don't have a plan yet to go forward, talking to your player base is always the right choice. Always. They apparently fired their community lead, I just got told. <laughs> so that's that. Yeah. Shit. That's unfortunate, of course. Oh, well, hopefully God. they're firing it to get a new one such that they're able to have a better community lead situation. Because, I mean, obviously comms are super, super important. And how often 
Have you thought something like this happens just in regular life where you know somebody, you think they're being a dick, and then it just turns out you just didn't communicate with them. It's like this yep. is just a massive scale version of that. Simple communication, yeah. a audit trail of what they've done, how many accounts they've banned in the last month. Yeah. Very, very simple things just to give people a sense of like, oh, they're that actually they care. I think I think the best thing to remember in all of this is the devs who care, they're on your side, man. They are as the players. And it's it sucks because there may be things where they can't communicate to you because of legal shit or financial shit. There may be things where they, they can't form a detection for the thing right now. They're doing investigation. They don't want to give away anything. They don't want to tip their hand to the person who's attacking. There's so many reasons not to, but I, I honestly believe that if companies were more open with communication to the players, there would be less bad feelings when things like this happen because this is going to keep happening. Agreed. Attacks are going yeah. to keep happening on companies. Attacks are going to keep happening on games. And if the companies can communicate with the players and not have, yeah, exactly, radio silence is bad. If, if there's no radio silence, if you actually can talk to people and say, hey, we are aware of this. We're working on it. I'm sorry. That's a great way to be. Honestly, I feel like it's the only way to be right now because otherwise toxicity is just going to run rampant because you have players that believe in the developers, that believe in the game, that know that it could be something better. And then you have people that are like, this game's shit, right? And the ones who are just like, this game's shit, and that's all that they care about, they're going to win if you don't say anything. You have to I'm, prove I'm, I'm, to the players that you're yeah. doing something. You have to. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm a mix of between both of them. I'm not going to lie. 100%. So I don't want to it's, sit here and act like I'm a, I'm a saint or something, right? Oh, no, you're, yeah. you're, you're tilted, and I get it. Like, I would be tilted, dude. You have a whole career invested in this game. You have a stream invested in the game. You're a pro player for this game. Of course you're tilted. Like, why wouldn't you be? That's crazy that you wouldn't be, right? This directly affects you both financially. It makes you nervous all of the time because now you're like, what? where's my career going? Like, what am I going to do? What if the game dies? What if everyone stops playing the game? Like, of course you'd be upset. Yeah. That's not wrong. That's not wrong at all. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. And like, dude, that's got to be exhausting as shit. So I get it. I super get it. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm gonna be honest here. It's a really nice conversation to have because I haven't been venting or anything like that. I've just been annoyed every single day, and it's kind of nice to hear it from the other side of like you guys that actually make the the games. And because I don't think like that, you know, I don't sit here and think, oh, what is the developer doing right now? All I see is no communication. The game's fucking dog shit. And every yep. time they make a new update, it feels like they just randomly threw a dice and just put that in this game. They're like, oh, fuck it, just make this character mega OP, and you're like, yeah. what? Yeah. Yep, because the Wait. game balance team is like, well, we're going to keep balancing the game. And and the marketing team's yeah. like, we're going to keep marketing the game. And the microtransaction team's yeah. like, we're keeping you to make microtransactions. And the security team is like, my hair is on fire. Please help me. Like A huge thank you, I think, from uh, everyone else, too. Thank you guys for letting me join. And thank you for um, yeah. opening my eyes for other things than just me fucking hating the game every single day. Anytime, dude. And if, yeah. if you want to talk any other time, hit me up. I will see you guys later. Bye, everybody. Yeah. All right, bye. Hope you guys have an amazing day. Yeah.